Welcome back, Blade fans. This old sword's with you. And I'm excited to present a new karambit from Lion Steel, made in Italy, from MagnaCut and designed by Ernest Emerson. None other than Ernest Emerson, with his famous wave feature included. And uh, this is kind of a semi unboxing here. There was a. This is the box that had a slip cover over it, it said Lion Steel all over it, and uh, it, this is called the LE-1, I believe as in Law Enforcement 1, I'm gathering, and there is the Ernest Emerson and Lion Steel logos. You get a nice little dedicated uh, folder about the knife, which I think is a good thing. You seldom see that these days, you just see generic little catalog things thrown in but there's the knife <laughs> and yeah it was in a little plastic bag and it comes in this box it's uh, mostly cardboard which is fine and uh, I think on the slip cover they had all the uh, numbers and whatnot here it is uh, the color I got this is actually a green it may come off looking a little gold but it's kind of an army green they make a brown and they make a red and I think they make a black there are also blacked out blade versions but um, this is interesting for many reasons so for about 180 bucks on um, White Mountain Knives I picked this up less 10 percent discount of course old sword is your discount code for 10 percent off which is significant, gets you close to 20 bucks off, 18 bucks. Uh, they've done so much right with this knife. Uh, first thing I'll mention, I'm going to get this out of the way right now. It is an aluminum handle, so it is a, a aircraft grade aluminum. Um, same thing they use in their SR series, like their SR11 and so forth, uh, their uh, frame lock folders. It is a frame lock, it has a hardened steel insert. So you got steel on steel, hardened steel on hardened steel. The steel, of course, is the um, new magic steel magna cut that's starting to crop up in a lot of knives these days. And uh, while I won't give you the specs on magna cut, it's easy to uh, look that up. Another interesting thing is it's an integral, integral, say integral three times in the morning. <laughs> integral frame this does not come together as two halves it's milled out of one billet of aluminum um, aluminum you ask um, how about Microtech uh, how many of their knives are made out of aluminum uh, most <laughs> except for the Bravo and some of the newer ones and maybe some of the Marfion customs Deep carry clip, as deep carry as you're going to get on a karambit because you need to access the ring. And it is, with that plug, switchable to the other side. Another neat feature, this flipper tab can be removed. And in the box, you get the Torx wrench. I'm not sure, I think it's a T6. And uh has to be because it's small little thing and you get that little screw which is um, hard to see but it's a little plug screw right there that goes in the hole that's left when you remove the flipper tab that's unique so you don't want that sticking up there and you want to simply spidey flick it absolutely no problem you want to thumb flick it no problem it is a strong detent on this knife I must say though a um, little bit of work closing the knife not exactly real fidgety and then you've got the Ernest Emerson wave feature right there and um, a lot of people initially thought well this had Ernest Emerson's name on it because they had a license the wave feature no he is the designer with Lion Steel and that is one of the first commercial knives I've seen recently that Ernest Emerson had uh, designed. I think a lot of his knives were being made by Benchmade for a while, and um, they put his name on the knife as the uh, 
the kind of clones of his knives from Benchmade years ago. Um, so there you see right there, Ernest Emerson design. So it is his design. Interesting thing here too is you've got kind of, they don't mention it, but you've got a built-in glass breaker, skull crusher kind of thing. Um, so this will wave out of the pocket or you can simply use your thumb if you don't like to use the spidey hole there. Interesting thing is maybe since it's oval, they don't need to license it from Spyderco. Um, I'm going to give you some more info on this, let you take a look at it, but I will read the specs today off of the Lion Steel website to be absolutely sure that I am correct. And there they are. Okay. And why not? I'll pop them up on the screen as well in my own text. Total length of the knife, 8.27 inches. Blade length, 3.23 inches or 82 millimeters. And that's 210 millimeters overall in metric. Blade thickness is 4 millimeters or 0 0.16. Total weight is 4.73 ounces. The aluminum does help there. The blade steel is CPM MagnaCut. The blade finish is either a stone wash that you see here or a chemical black is what they call the blackened blade. It's a frame lock, aluminum handle and frame, um, packaging, cardboard box, style, karambit, everyday carry EDC. So I think that covers the specs. Uh, maybe one thing that's missing will be the handle thickness. So if you got to have that, I will give it to you. Why not? A nice 0 0.49 inches. So you got all the other specs. And so it's a slim knife under a half inch. The nice thing is uh, some people have mentioned it's a little on the large size and I will uh, show you some comparisons in a bit. You've got some really nice jimping on the thumb ramp. So, you know, everybody feels the only way to use a karambit is with the ring, but that's not necessarily the case. In the Philippines, there is a whole style of karambit use where they use it more like a hawk's bill with the uh, edge forward point up. And you can verify that by going to some of the Filipino martial arts, Kali groups, Eskrima groups, etc. FMA, Filipino martial arts. So you've got lots of slotted space in the back that removes some weight as well. Um, I'm thinking they don't do any weight relieving inside additionally, and I am correct on that. So the holds on this, I can get all four fingers easily in the space between the ring and the guard. No problem whatsoever. So should you not like the concept of a ring, there you go. Back out a little more. If you want the ring, it's there. It's set ahead of the axis of the handle as it should be so that you can bring it up to the first knuckle or really second middle knuckle which is where it should be. You don't ever want to use a karambit with the ring all the way up here. It misaligns the blade and it also makes you uh, too, a little too committed to having your finger in that ring. I mean in uh, the uh, Libre fighting system they often talk about karambits being you know finger breakers and so forth. Uh, however, I think you'd be hard pressed to grab this blade and get it out of my hand, but you know, maybe when it falls like that, I don't know. Uh, personally, I don't see that as a problem and uh, masters of the karambit such as Doug Mark Haida and um, Bastian Cove, they, you know, if you watch them move the knife, uh, you may find that there's very little chance for the, the karambit to break their fingers. But again, you know, depends upon each person's use and I won't get too into that. Uh, so yeah, when you wave this out of the pocket you've got a couple options for where the clip 
should be. Now if the clip is there and it's down here and it gets waved out of the pocket, you're pulling it out by the ring, right? To wave it out and you're sort of left in this position. Um, holding the crambit point down, you're most likely going to want it in this position. So my take on that is a couple of ways. You can move the clip to this side, clip it this way in the pocket, wave it out of the front of the pocket instead of the rear, right? Pulling it out like that, and then you simply grab it, and you've got your point down edge forward karambit position. Um, if you wanted to leave the clip on the right side of the knife, then I would recommend, remember the ring is out of the pocket, enter it there, pull it out, it opens, and then just roll the hand over. And if you're used to a karambit, you're used to a little bit of a manipulation of the knife anyway, so that's another option. Of course, that can be used for left-hand pocket carry as well. You can leave the clip mounted as it is and pull it out of the left pocket and have it in the left hand, right, this way, and have your point forward position, uh, particularly if you're using a handgun. So if the emphasis is on LE, law enforcement here, if I'm correct on what the name means, then, you know, that's another option. A lot of tactical decisions. It's a relatively smooth handle. It's a little slick, but I feel locked in because of the contour of the handle and the way that the ring holds my hand in. Of course, the ring, if you use your pinky there, it's also going to hold you in a little bit. Um, let's look at the point. Notice how it's clipped and doesn't go straight out. So by doing this, Ernest in his design has both reinforced the point as well as redirected it more downward so that it attacks in that forward direction, you see? So without putting more curve in the blade, you have something that's a little more akin to the way they design Indonesian karambits. Now, for comparison today, I have the Browse Enforcer, one of my favorite karambits. And look at the extreme forward direction of that point there. Now, in Indonesian style, they will put your eye out with that. They punch, and it goes into the eye socket. You know, nasty thought, but... It also has a rooster's comb here, which can be used for grabbing, trapping. But with this knife, it can also be used for the uh, speed draw or wave, if you will, out of the pocket. That will, it's fairly sharp, that will catch on your pocket and open the knife, waving it out. Um, you got to get a different clip for this one to put it on this side because of the way that it curves, etc. But that's the Browse Enforcer. So let's put that in the picture for comparison. And then we've got the good old Spyderco Karambit. Designed by Sal Glesser, I understand. This is out of VG10. By the way, the Enforcer's D2. Um, so obviously the... Um, LE1 has the advantage on blade steel. Here you have kind of two halves of the frame meeting in the ring there. I put a deep carry uh, MXG clip on there, so I find that to be a little better clip. And this is a lockback. Very interesting. Kind of going back to some of the original Spydercos. And that's a much shorter, smaller, compact karambit. A lot of people prefer to have the blade closer to the pinky there so that it's kind of in line with the forearm. So there's that comparison. And then finally, I have probably the nastiest karambit of all time here. This is the Raptor by DEFCON. And this has got the grabbiest, pointiest point going on a karambit that I've found. It's just needle sharp. 
and so many people have bought this knife and immediately injured themselves. This is a titanium handle, S35VN blade, and um, all dressed up in kind of a copper anno uh, with uh, textured carbon fiber. It's a fancy knife, so definitely, you know, the most uh, artsy knife of the group here. So there's uh, the LE1 with three comparisons. Gonna put them away. And wish they'd make the Browse Enforcer in like a, uh, not sure it's still made, but I'd like to see that in a little better steel. But it is what it is, as they say. So multiple colors on this, uh, multiple ways of holding it. Um, I'm stoked by everything they did with this knife. It's an excellent design. If you're into karambits, even if you're not, I mean, <laughs> you like to cut carpet or tile or what have you, it would probably work pretty well with that, particularly with that reinforced point. Multiple opening methods, nice lock bar, strong detent on this guy. Ample size ring. Um, Ernest Emerson has done many videos in the past in using the Karambit, by the way, and has his own Karambit designs that are manufactured by Emerson knives. So he is no stranger to Karambit design by any means. So, you know, either like the flipper tab or you don't, but hey, you don't like it, take it off. Easy peasy. And then you're left with the wave opening and the, uh, the thumb hole. I may do that. We'll see. So that is the LE1 Karambit, manufactured in Italy from Magna Cut Steel, aluminum handle, reinforced lock bar by Lion Steel. Uh, check out some of Lion Steel's other stuff too. I mean, uh, probably sort of an overlooked brand, but they do have a dedicated following. And, uh, I think they're OEM for a number of uh, other brands as well. Okay, well, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe. I'll be back with you soon.